Good morning, happy Friday to everybody and welcome to today's webinar. Do me a favor, go to the uh, Q&A box and type in for me, what's your now reason for coming here today? And what I mean by that, great Emma, perfect. I, I mean that, you know, just like uh, clients get advice, um, uh, you know, there's a, there's a burning reason people turn up. So obviously there's a, something going on in your world right now that has made Facebook marketing or lead generation or getting good at this a now thing. So do me a favor, just type in the Q&A box and let me know what's, uh, what's your now reason? What's the one thing that uh, you'd like to make sure um, we get done today? Type it in the Q&A box. Hey man, while we're doing that today, just do me a, do me a quick, uh, quick overview. Why, you know, how did, why Facebook and why LinkedIn? Why did you choose this route? Because I know you've got a pretty, pretty awesome past and working with various different startups. Why, why this path? Um, look, I, I, first thing I would say is Facebook um, is one platform. It's not the only platform. Um, and, and so, you know, you've got LinkedIn, you've got AdWords, there's multiple platforms. It, it's not the only one. It's, it's one of them and it does work. It just, you just need to be able to execute it correctly for it to work. Um, but Facebook is, is a great channel versus other platforms, mainly because um, you've got massive reach uh, at reasonably low cost. Um, and for a B two C audience, um, it's it's an awesome platform, um, and so yeah, I think um, it, it's it's well suited to the, the to the advice space. Uh, but it's, as I said, it's not the only platform. AdWords is the other platform that we use, and that works um, very effectively as well. Perfect. So Glenn's just come through. He says he really wants to master Facebook advertising, and I, dude, I know you are because uh, Glenn's sort of deep in this right now. He's he's on a super fast learning curve. Uh, producing really great content, and uh, so this will be good. Marcus Roberts says he's looking at Facebook slash social campaign to augment our SEO work. So this is going to be useful. Greg says he uh, we expect Facebook to be a significant channel for our business, so you've got a, a like-minded person there, and we're keen to know how to make it successful. And Mark says, uh, the new financial year's resolution is to implement the digital vision I had for my practice, which got trampled here and there by, uh, here in, by the here and the now of the traditional model. Dude, that sounds poetic almost. So... Let's hope we can leave, everybody can leave here with one of those pieces in, in, uh, in thrall. Tino, should we just crack on? Did you want to uh, mention anything else or should we just get into it? I'm happy to dive in, let's do it. Cool. Before we do, let's talk, uh, let's talk Facebook myths because you and I uh, did a bit of uh, research heading into this. A lot of stuff you already know, uh, but there's a lot of preconceptions people have about Facebook and what it is and isn't. So I wanted to sort of throw at you, Tino, a couple of bits of research and no doubt you're going to throw some back. So, um, Here's really interesting, the one that I sort of took, top headline, 16 million Australians are connected on Facebook, and that is 79% uh, of adults use Facebook. So if you're not on Facebook, as we kind of know, you are literally in the minority. I find that, when well, I wasn't surprised, but still in the scale of the number kind of got me, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I think the other thing to throw in there is, um, uh, there are five, globally as well, there are five new Facebook accounts created per second um, and that's, that's growing exponentially as well. So the point in that is that um, your audience, all of your customers are on Facebook um, mm. and that's only going to get bigger and bigger. So there's some pretty phenomenal statistics there. They are. I'm going to pull another one out. Uh, so 79% of adults use Facebook. And uh, I think we published a blog recently which talked about, you know, Facebook's not just for cat videos. Um, the interesting thing is 74% of that 79% actually use it for professional purposes. So in other words, 60% of Australians are using Facebook on a regular basis uh, for business or professional purposes, which I think probably shatters some people's perceptions of uh, how a lot of people use it, right? Yeah, I think, I think one of the things to, to note is um, you, you can reach, it's a good B2C uh, platform, but um, it's just, how you position or craft the message to reach that audience um, is, is what makes the difference. But um, yeah, it's absolutely a phenomenal uh, platform. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's got some really interesting opportunities that we'll cover off today as well. I'm gonna throw a couple more in, if you don't mind. Uh, let's talk about usage time. For every six minutes the average person uses the internet, one minute of that is scrolling through Facebook. Uh, that's 10 minutes for every hour. Uh, which means the average Australian spends around 3.6 hours online, a little over an hour on mobile, which means uh, when you add it all together, that's an, oh, an hour and 17 minutes on Facebook per day. And I want to add this one in, 70%, 77% of users on Facebook 
have an annual income of $98,000 or more. So generally they are more affluent than most people give them credit for. Boom. I think the, um, the other thing to throw in there is that the age bracket, um, I think there's a misconception that people think it's only young people, but that's slowly shifting as well. Um, you've got baby boomers starting to use it uh, and older, older sort of age bracket creeping, creeping out there. So it's not just um, young 25, 34 year olds. It's, it's, it is um, everyone starting to get, get on board. So Yeah, I think 25 to 34 is the biggest bra bracket, 60, uh, 26%, but 55 to 64 is at 7%. And I think... Well, the research shows that the fastest growing demographic is that 55, uh, which grew by 80% recently. And another interesting fact is the teen demographic is actually declining by 25%. I think they were going to Snapchat or wherever. So, yeah, the demographic is really maturing, I think, is the, the, the message there. Is there anything else we need to add in there, Tino? Or? Um, no, no, I think that's, um, that's pretty um, representative of uh, what the platform is doing at the moment and the direction that it's headed. So, uh, but yeah, we can cover some more as we go through. Cool. Let's crack on. Yeah, Facebook is, is definitely an opportunity. Uh, and when you look at the numbers, which is kind of important, you realize that it's maybe not the, uh, uh, the mental, just mental, the mental chewing gum platform that, it, that it's held up to be. So let's, uh, let's sort of talk about some of the challenges that I kind of see often when I'm talking to businesses about, you know, Facebook and social media marketing. I think the biggest one is like, it kind of comes along as a new thing. Everyone's like, you've got to get on Facebook. You've got to market via LinkedIn. You've got to do AdWords. So naturally, there's... Uh, you know, two, two types of people. There's people that go towards that and go, I'm going to give it a go. Or there's other people that sort of pull back and say, I don't really understand how it works. I don't understand the rules. And, and they kind of wait to see what happens. Uh, I think some people who do jump into it, they kind of pay to play. They invest a bunch of time, possibly a bunch of money, uh, and they do a bunch of stuff. But the problem is they possibly don't get a return on their investments because either the strategy they've, they've applied or they've missed some uh, key element of it, they get nothing or they don't do it for long enough to get a result. And as a result, they kind of pull out, they throw the baby out with the bathwater and they say, right, I'm not doing that. It didn't work for me. And there's two realities here. Either you weren't doing it right or, you know, Tino, you know that consistency is one of the golden rules of marketing. You didn't do it for long enough to actually get traction and you go back and try the next thing, which you kind of do the same thing. Do you see anything else out there when it comes to this stuff that, that, that businesses, advice businesses consistently fall foul of? Yeah, I think that the big one is if you think of a J curve um, and there's an inflection point where it really starts to generate uh, returns on the effort, um, a lot of people uh, make conclusive decisions before it starts to get to the uptick in terms of the return. So, for instance, we have a lot of clients coming to us and said, oh, we've tried this. We've tried Facebook before, uh, and I asked them, well, how, how long have you been doing it for? And they said two months, um, and that's just not long enough to generate um, a meaningful result. It's a bit like going to the gym for one day and expecting to be fit for the rest of the year, um, and it's, it's, um, it's one of the most – I think it's one of the things you just need to keep, it, keep up for is have, have a good – have a long enough runway to um, get the foundation right, uh, invest in it, and then be patient to get it right because it doesn't happen overnight. Um, you just need, need, need to give it uh, enough runway. Perfect. Cool. Uh, let's talk about that. If you do get this right, if you manage to sort of nail it, what tends to happen, I find, is uh, you end up with what you really want to get, excuse me, I'm having a bit of problem moving through things, is you want to get a situation where you can really understand what it's all about. You understand um, the mistakes, you understand the tips and tricks, you understand where, where it can go wrong. Uh, ideally, you get ROI on your investments. You're able to put in you know, a dollar and you get your $5 or your $2 or, or you get the people through at the right price. And ultimately, I think if you get this right, you can line up not just leads, but you can put something out there that's going to generate uh, a stream of leads. Not necessarily ones that will, con some of them will convert today, but some of them might start to pay attention to what you're doing. They might listen to your message. They might read your content. They might watch your videos. They might start to you know, come along to your website and check things out. And then at some point in the future, they're going to trigger or trip to that point where they come and see you. And as a result, uh, you no longer have to worry about where your leads are going to come from next week or the, or the week after. You just know that, uh, that you've got a situation where they're going to come through consistently. Would you add anything else in there, Tina? Um, yeah, no, I think, I think the, 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 what under, underpins what you're saying is, is um, building... 
um, effectively a marketing m machine or a sequence of steps. Um, and for those of you that were on the previous webinar that we did a few months ago, um, I spoke about the three pillars uh, and getting that right. And I'll be touching on some of that uh, as we move through this and it builds on, on, on that session as well. Um, yeah. but, but I think all of the things you said there um, are absolutely uh, true and, and can be accomplished if you get a lot of the basic fundamentals right. Um, and that's probably the, key, the, the thing to keep in mind is just get the three pillars right. And I'll, I'll talk through those as we, we'll touch on that as, as we go through the webinar as well. I wanted to just sort of drop in a personal story because when I first started doing some of the, the you know, the stuff we're going to talk about today, there's always a period where I call it the foundational period where you put in a lot of time, you put in a lot of effort, you create content, you start to build out that stuff and you, you really wonder whether it's working. And I think the temptation, certainly for me at that point, was to go, you know what, this doesn't work. The social media thing is not going to generate leads. And uh, I, luckily I had a couple of people who sort of turned around and said, no, you need to give it time. And I know... You know, I'm, I'm pretty cynical, so I was like, yeah, yeah, I've heard that, give it time, there's a lot of investment. But there was a point in our business where about six months after we started doing it, something suddenly tipped. And we got a bunch of people who were reaching out and coming and uh, sort of engaging with us that we just didn't, hadn't met before. And then shortly afterwards, it took off. And I think that's one of the, when we talk about generating that, that sort of funnel, it's realization that some people are going to filter through quickly, but some people are going to filter through slowly. And that's that's fine too. That's the whole point of building an automated funnel. So, you know, it's not you constantly trying to manually trip them into having a conversation or tr uh, trigger them into having a conversation. It kind of does it on its own, but uh, you do need to give it time. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, the other thing to throw in there is, is understanding why it works or why it doesn't um, rather than just accepting that it doesn't work or, or it's not working. Because one of the things I hear a lot of is, People come to us and say, oh, we've seen other people try it and it hasn't worked, but not actually understanding why it hasn't worked. Uh, have they actually followed the right steps? Um, maybe some of them have, maybe some of them haven't, but is understanding why it doesn't work because it does work. It's just a matter of getting it um, executing correctly as well. So, it's got a couple of questions coming through. Mark, we're going to cover off this Facebook measuring thing. Uh, Michael, we're totally going to cover off on how you know when to start adjusting the campaign, other key metrics. So let's just dive into it. Do me a favor, which of uh, what we've spoken about so far most describes where you are at? So for example, have you uh, given it a go? Have you found yourself investing a bunch of money and not getting a return? Have you sort of tried a bunch of stuff and not got results? Or are you totally fresh and you kind of want to know how to start? Do me a favor, type in the Q&A box so we know kind of where you're at, which problem or which challenge you are specifically facing. In the Q&A box, if you don't mind. Swag it in there. Uh, Mark says he's totally fresh. So this is brand new stuff uh, straight off the bat. Lovely, Mark. Uh, Glenn, I'm not, uh, totally fresh, says Emma too. He's uh, diving in for the first time. Uh, Michael said he ran some campaign 12 months ago, gave up. He's for it again, but fear not making the right decision. So cool, this is more of a remedial class. Well, not remedial, you know what I mean, Michael, tweak. Uh, Glenn's learning fast, trying to get it right. So Glenn's kind of got a bit of insight into how it all works but it's still at the point where a bit of framework would be good. That's perfect. That gives me, sort of, that gives us both sort of plenty of ideas to, to, to work with. So let's, uh, that's a bit about uh, Tino. Do you want to give us a, just a very quick one minute background as to, you know, why, why this is your thing, uh, what you've done in the space previously? Sure. Um, so quick summary. I, um, I've spent a good part of, 12, 13 years in the financial technology services sector. I spent 10 years um, uh, building out the Oz Forex um, uh, business um, for the first half of those, well, for the, for the majority of that career, um, and um, uh, worked in building out their uh, commercial division, sat on the leadership team there for a bit. Um, and I learned a lot there in terms of what works and what doesn't, and actually, that's where I really came to a realization to know that digital acquisition is, is where everything was headed um, and had a good journey there for 10 years. I spent some time uh, with the CEO and founder at um, Society One uh, in a similar capacity, uh, working with um, uh, large strategic partnerships in helping them acquire customers using a peer-to-peer -peer lending or loan origination and investment platform. Um, and that was an interesting ride. And um, prior to all of that, I, in the early days, I, I worked at Schroeder's um, Funds management and, and, and at ANZ as well, um, and I've um, had some. I've worked on some really interesting projects. Um, so throughout that time, I, I spent time 
launching um, with Xero, uh, cloud accounting uh, application, which I'm sure you've all heard of. Uh, we also did a launch with Uber, uh, Sasu, or some other few names that I've worked with as well. So um, yeah, it's been a really interesting, interesting ride. And um, I've launched the Binary M, which is a business that I'm in now um, about six months ago. Um, really just taking all of the learnings and, and from that, knowing what works and what doesn't, um, and distilled that into um, a viable uh, sort of proposition in terms of helping other banking and financial services businesses get more customers using digital channels. Yeah, such a great opportunity or space as well because there's, uh, you know, I think there's very few people out there who are doing it really, really well. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's uh, it's an exciting time to be in the, in, the, in the space, um, and you know some of the. I'm really excited now because we're also um, strategically partnered with the um, the ex CMO um, of Ozforex, um, Chris Minan. He's he does all of our SEO, PPC, programmatic, uh, a lot of our digital work as well. So all of our clients um, get to to um, see all the benefits in in, in um, all of the work that he does as well. So. Do you want to talk us through a quick, uh, I know you've been working with a firm recently, so I'd, I'd love to hear a bit of a case study um, and just kind of give us an overview of, you know, how it's worked in practice for, 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 for your most recent sort of success. Yeah, sure. Um, so this is a firm, uh, for a bit of background, they were a newly launched advice firm, um, or the brand was, uh, basically four guys that um, had um, different backgrounds. One was an advisor, one's an accountant, um, others, others a property consultant, but they, they launched a, a new um, uh, joint partnership or, or, or an alliance on their new brand. No prior digital marketing experience. Um, they traditionally relied on um, referrals, um, but they really wanted to understand uh, and map out a digital strategy um, and, and how to actually utilize um, social media and, and other digital channels as well. So. Um, the, their challenges were sort of not knowing uh, where to start, um, so they, they were effectively starting from a clean, clean sheet of paper. Um, and what we did with them is, is we, we kind of um, we, we implement. We decided to implement um, what we're going to talk about today, and that, that's a five-step funnel. Which the purpose of this five-step funnel we'll cover off today, and what we did with this client was you're taking someone from you're taking a cold lead by someone from who's clicked on a Facebook ad all the way through to um, booking a time with you um, mm. and creating inbound qualified um, qualified leads. Um, and the campaign that we focused on was um, housing affordab affordability in Sydney. Um, and those of you on the previous session uh, might recall one of the key pillars in getting um, a marketing program right is understanding the customer problem. So we spent a lot of work understanding, you know, what's the biggest customer problem um, in their audience in the market at the moment, what keeps them up at night, and we decided to shortlist um, housing affordability in Sydney, uh, and that's where the main campaign was was, was centred around. Um, and the information that we went to market with in terms of helping solve that problem um, was um, offering to help um, people who were looking to purchase property um, to increase their buying capacity and look at alternative property strategies to get into the market, be it an investment or owner occupied. Um, opportunity uh, and we designed um, a five-step funnel for them um, which effectively as I said takes them from a cold lead on a, on a Facebook ad all the way through to a scheduled session in, in their calendar um, and we also expanded the campaign out using LinkedIn to third-party distribution partners um, with, with accountants um, and that's some of the work that we did um, I think the thing to note is, is there's no silver bullet there's no magic potion you don't turn this on and it just works straight away um, and then we, we worked really closely with them to help them map out a, a good roadmap on that. And some of the results we've gotten so far is that we're, we're on track to generate a cost per acquisition of about $800, which, which I'm really happy with at the moment, but we're, we want to get that lower. Um, and we're effectively starting to generate um, a good volume of inbound um, quality leads in terms of being um, automatically booked in, into their calendar. And uh, another asset we're building is, is, a, is a list, is a customer list of, of the emails that we're collecting along the way as well. Love it. Perfect. And I think that's probably something to just uh, sort of make really, really clear. If you're going to go to Facebook and you're going to talk about your financial planning process, or you're going to talk about why you're independent or any of the things you do, chances are you're not really going to capture the right market. It is all about what is the problem, pressing, immediate, real problem that you're solving for people. And if you can get your head around that, and focus your uh, marketing on that, you are going to 
uh, get eyeballs a lot, a lot more easily. Cool. Let's rock on, man. Let's uh, let me just get my. Let's talk about the model. Talk us through this. So this is this is pretty much how it works, start to finish, right? Yeah. So this is a quick snap. Let's sort of take a step, a bird's eye, thirty thousand view um, uh, view of, of this whole um, five step funnel, uh, which we'll go through step by step. Um, but the purpose of this is, as I said, you you, you got. We're taking a cold lead all the way to someone uh, actually going ahead and booking a session with you and, uh, in, in your calendar. And we're using marketing automation and, and accomplishing omnipresence um, by using retargeting, email automation. Um, and the idea is to, is to generate inbound qualified leads um, in, in, in doing this. And the thing to note is this, this is one funnel. It's not the only funnel. Uh, we do multiple different versions and iterations of different marketing funnels. Um, but the one we're going to talk about today is, is what you see on the screen and we'll dive a bit deeper uh, behind each one of those steps as, as we go through it. But um, uh, that's, that's a bit of a bird's eye view before we dive into the Facebook ad um, specifically. And these numbers below are what you should be ideally targeting to spend. So one to three dollars for every click that comes through. Yeah, uh, so, yep. yeah so they're, they're indicative KPIs. Um, just to, a checkpoint to look at the metrics around you know w what are you spending uh, is it you spend too much or not enough what sort of performance are you accomplishing along each step of the way um, but the bottom line is um, it also depends on where you are at if you if you're a new business to market no one recognizes who you are your digital presence is fairly embryonic you should be expecting a cost per acquisition um, almost 100% of your revenue per client. So what I mean by that is you could probably, I mean, in, on, on the screen you see the uh, a CPA or cost per acquisition of 250 to $500. And what I mean by that is what are you willing to pay to acquire a new customer? Um, our goal, it'd be, it's, it's, if you can get between 250 to 500, that's in my view pretty awesome. Um, yeah. It's pretty attractive economics, i.e. You're, you're spending up to $500 to acquire a customer who might generate you in the advice space anywhere between five to 10. But yep. in the thing to note is if you're new to market, um, and this is some of the metrics we use at OzForex, is that um, in the first year, um, your CPA could be um, expected to be 100% of the revenue per client. So if you're making five grand a year from a client, you should be willing to uh, spend five grand to acquire that client. But then in year two, three, and four, um, as you, the lifetime value of that customer recovers that investment and then it gets better and better over time because the, the economics get better, you're more known to market, you start to get more referrals, your digital presence grows and your CPA on the lifetime value of that client um, gets, gets a lot more attractive. And just to expand on that, it's not like you're going to have to pull 500 bucks out of your pocket and give it every time they book a consult. The idea is that you know if you're spending three bucks a click and one in oh, five percent of them are actually opting into your landing page, that makes sense that you're what, 60 bucks for every time somebody actually gives you their email address. So you're paying 60 bucks for an email. Based on that, if then they go through and watch your value video and let's say one in four actually go, oh, okay, I'll book a, I'll book a 15 minute prevet call with you. Then you times your $60 by four, which gives you a $240 for every prevet conversation and, and it sort of cascades like that. That's the that's the thinking around it, but the, the ultimate the spend is coming at that Facebook advert end. Yeah, totally right. So, I mean, to, to another way to look at it is you should be paying between one to three dollars per click when you when you go live with your Facebook ad, um, and then you should pay anywhere between up to forty dollars for for an email, um, and fifty to one hundred dollars roughly um, for for a booking, etc. So, but yeah, we'll, we'll dive into that as we go along. Okay, cool. Uh, let me just dig out through this. Cool. Uh, retargeting automators, talk, automation, talk us through this. Okay, so I'll, I'll just touch, because it's worth noting, but we won't, otherwise we'll be here all day. Uh, the, the thing that most people don't do, um, and is definitely worth doing, and this is one of the keys to success that we had at OFX, and, and Chris, um, the ex-CMO of OzForex, who does a lot of our um, uh, campaigns for us now, and our clients, is he, he's, he's an advocate, he loves this, um, and he loves it because it works. Um, it's very cost effective and it allows you to really be the king of the mountain in your in your space um, And what I mean by that is if someone visits if someone clicks on your ad um, Or goes to your landing page or clicks on your ad, but doesn't go to your landing page or Goes to your landing page, 
but then doesn't watch your video, if they ever get stuck, what, ha what the retargeting does, it actually follows them around everywhere they go. It'll produce a banner ad or an ad so that when they leave your website or they click on your ad but don't progress, you're mm. still following them around and, and you're, there's a brand presence there it's reminding them to say, hey, thanks for clicking on the ad. Um, we've got some great information for you around A or B or C, whatever the campaign's centered around. Yeah. Why don't you come back and click, watch the video, or opt in. So it's it, it's really just it's really sort of creating what what we call omnipresence um, and surrounding them with with your brand and the, yeah. the end result is they think you're everywhere um, and, and you, it gives the impression that you're a much larger business than, than you are because everywhere they go on the internet they see your ad um, and it's very controllable as well and that's what re re retargeting is uh, and something that's definitely definitely worth doing um, in in, in a campaign. Yeah. Are you going to talk about the mechanism as to how you do it and how it works a bit later on, or do we want to touch on that now? Um, with the retargeting, I, I probably won't dive into too much detail in, in the how, how to do it. I just wanted to point it out because uh, we probably don't have time to dive into detail on, on, on that, but it's, it's worth just noting. Um, that, and if you do that, you're, you'll probably be three steps ahead of a lot of your competitors because a lot of people don't do it, um, and it's low-hanging fruit. Uh, it's it worth is. Doing. Totally. Okay. Talk to us about uh, you know KPIs management that sort of stuff. And I think Michael, this is this is a question you had around uh, how should Mark said how long should we give it to to measure? Uh, how do we know when to start adjusting the campaign? Are there any key metrics you should be looking at immediately to understand success and failure? This feels like this is a lot of that. So far away. Yeah. So I'll, I'll talk through this step by step, but then also what I'll do is as we progress through the webinar, um, we'll, we'll we'll look at the practical application of it um, at each step. So I'll just talk sort of quickly uh, at each each of these four steps, and then we'll, we'll expand on it again as as we go through. So you should be sp spending between one to three dollars per click. Um, make sure you run it for at least forty eight hours. I would dare say two to five days. A lot of people come to us and say, "Oh, I've produced an, an ad." Uh, and it's not getting the click-throughs, as in no one's clicking on it. And I ask them, well, how long have you been doing it for? And they're like, well, 24 hours. And I'm like, well, <laughs> not, long, not long enough. Um, so, so just make sure that there's a um, sufficient amount of time that it's been live for, because it takes time for it to gain a little bit of traction. Um, if it's got low click-through rates and you've had it running for two to five days, um, potentially look at recutting or testing new, new images, and we'll explain why we need to do that. If it's still got a low click-through rate, test more angles in terms of the the, the, the creative, um, how you write, what sort of headline you're writing, uh, what 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 um, wording you're using, etc. And again, we'll talk about that as well. Uh, with, with the opt-ins, um, you should be, as a guide, be willing to pay anywhere between twenty to forty dollars um, per opt-in per email, um, which is around about a three or five percent opt-in rate. But again make sure you've got enough of a sample size to draw a, a conclusion and anything less than 100 hits to your landing page uh, wouldn't even, don't even waste your time thinking about if it's working or not. Just wait till you at least get 100 hits to your landing page. Uh, anything less than that is statistically insignificant uh, and you could be just going around in circles, wasting your time, changing stuff without even knowing if it's actually working or not. Um, if it's still got low conversions, you're not getting opt-in rate, then you need to check whether the landing page matches the ad i.e. is it aligned, does your ad, um, does the message in your ad align with the message on your landing page, i.e. if someone clicks on an ad, their expectation is they, they're going to see something on your landing page that relates to it. And if the information is completely unrelated or doesn't make sense, then people aren't going to opt in because it's not what they were looking for. Um, the other checkpoint is check the technology, make sure it's actually working, um, test it yourself. Um, and then if, if all of that is still if ticking all the boxes and working for you, then you might need to actually recraft your, your landing page um, to, to uh, another version to see, to see if that's working. But you must check the first things that I mentioned there first, make sure you're accomplishing that before you even think about changing or recrafting the whole landing page. The third part there is bookings um, in terms of getting someone to book a time with you online. Um, Again, make sure you've got 100 opt-ins uh, as a sample size, as a guide. Anything less than that, don't waste your time trying to think if it's working or not. But wait till you get 100 opt-ins as a guide. If it's still getting low conversions, check the video matches the landing page. The same concept is if someone's opted in, provided you an email address, they're expecting to see um, some information um, which is represented in the landing page, and if the video isn't what they expected, then they're not going to watch your video all the way through. 
So just make sure there's a map alignment in, in, in the video um, that you're presenting. Again, if that's good, check the technology. Is When you click on the landing page and opt-in, does the video actually work? Test it yourself, pretend you're the customer, go through it a few times. Perfect. If, that, if that's all good and still working, test more videos. If, uh, more than likely, it's the first few things. Um, I think if you get the video right the first time, it's unlikely that you'll need to recut it again. So in the rare circumstances, you might need to redo a new video. Um, and then the last point there is um, uh, how many consult well how many consultation sessions are you converting? As in, if someone books a time, how many of them are you actually converting? Um, and um, you want to do at least I, I think anything less than twenty is a waste of time. Uh, as in, do twenty bookings first and then decide if it's working or not. Um, you know, if you, we've had some people come to us and say, oh, we've got five meetings, five meetings booked, we haven't converted a client. Well, I mean, you, you, you can effectively go another 10, 15 bookings um, without converting a client. Um, but it's, uh, we, we think, in our view, you need to do at least 20 to make it statistically significant. And you should be able to convert at least at a mi minimum 20%. Um, higher, if, depending on how good your sales process is. Um, so you need to check this out. If, if it's still not doing well after 20 meetings, then you need to check um, the, the, the actual sales delivery or your sales process around what, you, what you're saying and how you're approaching that, that session. Love it. Hey, I uh, just wanted to check in very quickly before we get stuck into the actual funnel. Uh, is this useful? If so, can you let me know what's, what's sort of popping for you most of all so far? Pop it in the Q&A while we uh, get ready to chat about the nuts and bolts of it. What's popping for you most? Compared to what you've done in the past or what you know about it, what's been the most useful thing so far? Uh, I've got a question from Glenn. I might ask this while we're just uh, getting another. He says the challenge is how much to spend per day. Are we going to cover off on this? Um, look, I, we're not going to dive into detail around it, but I mean, you can essentially create, craft a, a budget that suits, um, I mean, you, you could do a budget of $20 a day if you wanted to, it'll just take you longer to get there. I, if you did $20 a day versus $500 a day, to get statistically significant volume or data to make any changes, it's obviously just gonna take you longer, right? So it, it is possible to work on very small budgets, it's just yep. what, what, what time frame or how much runway have you got the, um, for the objectives or outcomes that you want to accomplish, so. So, so yeah. big budget. Big risk, but potentially big, quick return if you get it right. Smaller budget, you're going to take longer to learn whether whether it's working or not. Totally, and I, I think as a rule of thumb, uh, I think learning quickly and making small mistakes is less costly in the long term. Um, because if, if if you the quicker you find out what works, it's actually costing you less, and you're not wasting time, right? So effectively, if you spend more out quickly, and you can distill and and get rid of all the, the, the losers in terms of what adds more and what isn't. If you know what's winning, once you find that, you stick with it and then you invest more because you know it's gonna generate your return. So it's, it's a bit of a trade-off or balance between the two. Yeah, and I think uh, this is probably, again, sort of reiterating your point from the case study, which is, if you're gonna spend a bunch of money on Facebook, but you actually haven't done your research into what are the problems that your, your target market actually wants solved, then uh, you are burning money. So really start with that problem investigation thing and really know you've got something that's of value before you suddenly decide to kind of go out there and, and throw things is definitely a way of not wasting money. Uh, Glenn says statistics to gauge success have been really useful. Michael uh, Chu, time and volume measures are a really good guide. So I can, he can tend to react too quickly to the wrong things. So that's great to hear. Greg said the expected conversion rates and cost per click from Facebook are really useful. And Mark said, uh, I'll answer that one shortly. Cool, that's good to know. Let's kick on, let's uh, crack on. So five part funnel. Uh, let's break them down by one by one. Start by finish, Facebook advert landing page, value video, booking application, and the consult. First one's the Facebook ad. And I, I tend, you know, tend to think about a Facebook ad. You can think about it one or two ways. It's, in many ways, it's a bit like, uh, it's a, bit like a, a, a concert um, poster. What, what you're putting out there is a really quick indication of here's all the reasons you want to come and click on it or buy a ticket or come along. Another way I think about it, it's, it's a bit like bait. You know, if you speak to anyone who's a fisher person, a fisherman, fisherwoman, fisher person, um, they'll tell you that if you want to catch a certain type of fish, you need to use a certain type of bait. And ultimately what we're trying to do here is create a desirable thing 
that achieves one aim, and that's to get, get attention, create desire, and get click through, right? Totally, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, um, we'll cover off in a sec, but yeah, the, 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 the ad is the first part of the funnel, and if you can't get people through that, then uh, yeah, you've got a slight problem, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk, talk through what uh, best cool. practice is. So let's talk, uh, let's talk sort of golden rules of Facebook advertising. Um, we were talking about this having a bit of a giggle. I think you sent her a slide. Basically, yeah. we want to avoid this. We've all seen it before in financial services. The older couple running down the beach, smiling away. He's got all his hair. He's no big gut. She's in great shape. She's, it's, it's, you know, we've seen it so often, so it kind of just washes over us. And one of the things, uh, we've got a module on the member site called the angle sharpener, which we try and find a really clear marketing angle for a business. And step one in that is list all of the things you've seen everybody else do so much that it's become a cliche. I reckon you want to, want to avoid this. You know, the happy, smiling family in generic target clothes, jumping on top of each other, rolling around. And uh, this was your particular favorite, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm getting sick and tired of seeing that one now. But um, I think um, have you, have you, it's a bit like um, when you drive down the highway and you see um, a bill poster for the first time, it probably grabs your attention and you, and you take notice, right? Uh, the second time you drive down the highway, yeah, you know it's there. You probably check it out again. But the third, fourth, and fifth time, you, you've seen it before, and you won't look. And and ads, Facebook ads behave, um, or the market in the Facebook space is the same thing. If you've seen the ad before, you're not going to look at it all the time. So ads get tired. You need to refresh yeah. them constantly. Um, and and so that's that's the reason why you just want to make sure that the, the image you're showing hasn't been shown shown to your audience a million times before by your competitors. I saw a, uh, a presentation recently by a guy called Kevin Hutto. He did a live stream and he was talking about a, a system he'd created for Facebook selling called the introvert selling system. But they put on a, a they actually got long form with the post, but he had an image on there. And I kid you not, it was the most colorful thing you've ever seen with a cat with a sword on the back of a unicorn in front of a rainbow. And the click through on that was amazing. Not because it was relevant in any way to what he was talking about, but because it achieved what the image really needed to do, which was grab your eyeballs and give you the opportunity to put the words, words across. And I think that was, uh, you know, it was a real lesson for me that um, pick your images wisely and uh, make them eye-catching and not bland. So, so now we've got a bit of a worksheet going on. So do you want to walk us through sort of the worksheet, how it works? Yeah, so maybe, I think maybe a good, um, a quick exercise here to do is, um, Let's start with a customer problem. Write down in your target, whoever your target audience is, what are the top five um, things that keep them up at night that you can solve for them in terms of your advice business, um, the products and services you have. Um, what are the top five problems that the customer has? And, and these, um, just to take a step back, um, we need to realize that, and I think I've mentioned this a few times before, no one wakes up out of bed and goes, I actually need a financial plan. The reality is, um, the reality is there's an event um, or a trigger event in, in any, everyone's life and that creates a, a problem um, for that customer to solve. Um, so point A, uh, they're at point A and they want to get to point B and, it, and, and, and there's that gap. As an advice firm, you, you, your goal is to fill that gap, get that person from point A to point B. So what is, what is point A? What is, what is the actual customer problem at point A? And this is critical to get right. It might be a little bit boring, but you everything else um, can be done correctly. And if you get this wrong, um, you can waste a lot of money showing the right ad, the right creative, doing all of the things right, but you're showing to the wrong audience for the wrong message. So this is, you want to get one thing right. This is t critically important. Um, and, and the thing to do here is just pop down five, top the top five things that keep your audience up at night. Um, uh, that, that, that is a problem that you, you can solve for them. So this is your cue if you're, uh, to jump in the Q&A box and type in the box, maybe something that you know is a, is a clear problem. Uh, have you got any of the top of mind, Tino, from your previous work that you might be able to share? Well, I mean, the case study I just mentioned there is um, uh, affordability in, in getting to the property market. I mean, there's so much hype around that, but it's a big customer problem. Um, everyone wants to buy property um, and affordability is, is the big problem. So, um, you know, what's... But, I mean, even anecdotally, I hear everyone talking about it. I go to the cafe, I go to the park, everyone's talking about property and how expensive it is. It's written in the papers, mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, but it's because it's a big problem. Um, and 
you know, if you if you look online, a lot of the content, articles, and white papers, everything online is in the advice space, particularly in the investment space, is all centered around property. Um, they're good data points to know that. Well, okay, it's it's topical, and if you if you if you hit the nail on the head with with a problem that's topical, then people want to know more and find out more about it. And you've got information that can help them with that. Then you're onto a winner. Mark, put in the box. Fix my cash flow. I'm going backwards financially. I won't be able to do all that I want in life. Find me more money. And I think that's a really good one. Whether people would actually go, my problem is I, my cash flow is broken, or I find that probably the problem is I, 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 don't, I should be doing better and I don't know where my money is actually going. But that's, that's a common one, right? Totally, yep. Yeah. Uh, Michael's put one in. Earning good money, but we're not making the most of it. I love that. Ruben, we were talking about this just the other day. Um, yeah, another one would be, I've just had a baby. Time to, time to get real about things. Uh, I've seen you paying too much tax is another one that sort of, um, you know, comes across pretty regularly. I'm five years away from retirement and I don't know what I'm doing. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff in there. So that's good. And by the way, if anybody's interested in sort of getting a repository of these, we've just put a new, uh, downloadable tool on the main site, which is called the online value proposition shortcut. And it's got a lot of this stuff in there. Yeah, can, can I just? There's one there's, as you were reading through some of those. One of the one of one of them uh, grabbed my attention is um, I think it was I think you mentioned going into retirement. Yeah. What, what, what's the actual problem? Um, because that's come up through some of the campaign work we've been in with our clients, and that's um, just going into retirement. That's that's the trigger event. That's not the problem. Uh, the trigger event in that person's life is yes, they're transitioning into retirement, but what's the concern? What keeps them up at night? And what we found was that the concern is. How are they going to live the lifestyle that they want in retirement? As in, do they have a sufficient amount of uh, assets or an asset base to generate that income? Um, yeah. so that's the problem. The trigger event is going to retirement, but the problem is, is, is follows on from that. I've referred to it a few times as, as, as the, uh, the dog food conundrum, conundrum. How can I make sure that I'm not eating dog food when I'm 70 instead of enjoying the lifestyle I want? Uh, Sean's is I know that I need to plan for the future, but I'm very spontaneous and I'm a chronic procrastinator and get distracted by shiny things in front of me. I totally agree whether they would, whether that would be their exact wording, Sean, probably not, but it would be, I think the problem would be, I get that I want, I have to do it, but I don't want to have to sacrifice today to live well tomorrow. What's, what's the shortcut? Cool. Any other ones popping out? Tino, or should we, should we crack on? I think let, let's let's crack on. There's a fair bit to cover, but yeah, we can. T I'll tie some of the things that have been mentioned back into um, the stuff we work through. So hopefully that, that that'll be helpful as long as we move through it. Let's talk about the anatomy of the ad itself because this is really important. And if you get this right, you'll end up saving yourself a lot of time being rejected by Facebook. Yeah. So um, surprisingly or unsurprisingly, um, some of you may or may not know, the the success of a Facebook ad actually comes down to the image. 80% um, of the success on, a, on an ad is actually the image. Um, and so if you unpack the anatomy a little bit more, on, as you see on the screen, um, the next, the second most um, important or critical part of what makes an ad successful, uh, or 10% of it, is, 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 the, um, uh, is the wording or the copy just above the ad you can see at the top of the screen there as well. Yep. Um, followed by um, the wording where it's a step one property and tax, uh, followed by there's a, I've graded out only because this is actually, this is one of our customers' um, ads and I have to anonymize it for privacy reasons. But yeah, there's a link where, that, where it says 3% um, and that could be a link to your site, et cetera, uh, but it's URL. And then um, the, the, least, the least important part is, that, is actually the button. Um, so it really comes down to the ad. So if your ad's not working, um, the first place to check is the image, um, and, and, and that's what <laughs> drives a lot of the success. So if, not, if it's not working, it's most likely to do with that. Cool. And uh, how, many, how many images, how many versions of the ad would you run at any one time to double check the image? Would you just do it one by one or would you run a couple? No, you, we, we definitely, uh, best practice is split test everything um, to yep. the same audience. Um, and, and so uh, we, we do anywhere, we'll, we do up to five at any one point in time. Um, so you start with a big audience and you um, keep everything constant, like the copy, the create, everything's the same. It's just the only variation is the image. Um, mm -hmm. And you split test five images. Uh, and once we've got enough of a sample size, i.e. referring back to the KPIs that I mentioned, 
then you start to strip out the losing images, i.e. if two or three or whichever one of the five images that you have aren't performing within the KPIs, get rid of them very quickly, otherwise you'll be wasting money. So you just end up with winners. Um, but as I said before, ads get tired, so you're constantly going to be able to come up with new images and constantly split test them. Uh, and, and the end result is that you, you end up with uh, the best performing images um, but realizing that you know they, they they have a bit of an expiry, as I said, if you see that same ad over and over again, you, you're going to get sick and tired and not click on it. So this is a constant sort of refining or refreshing of, of the images and picking the winners out of those as well. Love it. And tips for choosing images. So um, there's six tips here uh, that um, if you just pull, I can't see the top of the screen. So if you're bring, what's number one? I can't see that. Number one, have people in the images. Usually people smiling works better. Yeah, so as a rule of thumb, um, here's a checklist for everyone to use. Uh, generally speaking, pictures of people, preferably smiling, work perform better. Um, and you know, we ran our own ads on Facebook for Binary M, um, and I picked five images, um, thinking the one of me probably wouldn't be, um, at all. I thought, who would want to pick on a, pick, Click on an ad with a picture of me. I thought that's not that wouldn't wouldn't catch my attention. Uh, however, it, it seemed um, it, it was actually one of the best performing images. So the point of that is sometimes what you think will work is not necessarily representative of what the market wants. So let the market tell you what they want, not you decide. You've obviously need a starting point or a hypo hypothesis. Uh, so start. That's why you start with five and you cut it down. Um, use people if you can as a general rule of thumb. Um, second. Use really bright colors, um, high contrast, so it, it, it stands out. Um, and it's different to the Facebook interface. Make it really pop, uh, make it stand out. Because Facebook colors, um, if they're the same as the Facebook colors, there's someone scrolling through the Facebook feed, it's unlikely to be, to be seen. Um, use something eye-catching, make it relevant um, to the market and, and the message. Um, and as I said, test, test a whole bunch of images, including yourself as well as other people as well. So. Um, Throw yourself in there as well and, and just see, see, see what sort of response you get from your market. Love it. And uh, Glenn on time has just asked about sources of images. Bing, Glenn, like we read your mind. Here you go. Um, so, yeah, a couple of, I mean, mate, there's, there's no shortage of, shortage of images. You can get images everywhere. Um, so, here's just a couple of ideas. You don't have to use these, but here's just a starting point. Um, the first thing to note is, is um, you can pay for images or you can get them for free. Totally up to you. As a rule of thumb, paid images, um, paid image platforms are normally better because you get better quality images, you get a bigger choice to choose from, um, yes. but it's totally up to you. If you want free images, you can go to Google Images. Just make sure that they're royalty free and you're aware of the usage rights, otherwise it can come back to bite you on the bum. <laughs> um, and I know you've got a story about that, Stu, whether you're sure or not. Um, but I think, um, go to Google Images. I don't know if you can navigate to the screen now, um, to, if that's possible, if you go to uh, Google. Yeah. yeah, we can do that. Just give me two yeah. seconds. Yeah. Uh, it might be a bit slow, but we'll, uh, we'll deal with that when it comes in. Right. While, while you're doing that as well, take note of um, pixabay.com, pexels.com. Um, you go in, you just go to that site, type in a uh, keyword, pick up an image, download it, and you're done. And they're all free. But here's the thing remember, if everyone's doing that, uh, it's a stock image. You don't want, you just make sure that not 50 of your competitors are using the same image because then we'll have the same image pop up, like the picture of the egg or um, the retiring couple running down the sand hill, et cetera. So just, just make sure that it's, it's ticking all those boxes as well. So, and to resist the temptation to grab something off Google that looks awesome and put it on your website. Um, I got a, <laughs> a phone call on a Friday, probably about six to nine months ago. The guy was really friendly. He's like, hey, Stuart. Yeah, I'm Stuart. Hey, I'm just calling about an image on your website. And I went on, I was like, okay, I have no idea where that came from. Yeah, well, we're calling from Dun & Bad Street on behalf of Getty Images. Okay, uh, you, you know, we're, we, that's, a, that's a licensed image. Okay, cool. I, didn't, I wasn't aware that they got in, the, in there. Great. Well, you owe us 700 bucks. And I was like, what? That's a $10 image at most. And uh, yeah, the message here not that, uh, is that there are legal firms out there who are ambulance chasing images on websites and they're going through there and then issuing these ridiculous uh, demands. So... The easy way is just don't do it. If you do end up getting caught in it, give me a bell. I know, I'm, I know how to do it. But yeah, find royalty free. Or another one that I, I think is great is appsumo.com has a regular sort of cheap offers for um, a deposit photos. $39 for, for 100 images. And that's really good value. Yeah. 
So sure. just in terms of Google Images, if it's too slow, Stu, I can just talk through it. But if you okay. go to Google, uh, if you go to Google, click on Images, search for a keyword, um, and then click on Tools, and then click on um, Size. There's a Size option. Cool. Up it comes. Uh, which one do you want? We want Tools. Uh, click on Tools, and yeah. then uh, there should be a Size drop-down option, and then mm -hmm. click Greater than 1024 by 768, so it's high resolution. Um, cool. And, and then we'll use rights. Yeah. So that, that, that you do your search here, and then the, it's because it's high res, the, you can just download them for free and, and use them as well. So super easy, it's free, um, and that's just one of many options that you can Yeah, we do labeled for reuse, which generally means you're, uh, you're okay. I think labeled for reuse is, is where it's generally okay to use them again for another purpose. Yeah. And even cool. on the Facebook platform itself, when you're actually creating the ad inside the platform, um, Facebook uh, allow you to, I think you get them free if you advertise on Facebook. So they've got some, they've got a really good media library as well. So that's another option. There you go. Cool. Hopefully that's useful. Uh, let's crack on. Next up, let's talk headlines. Yeah. So, I'll leave the screen up. So BuzzSumo did a really interesting um, survey uh, based on 100 million headlines. Um, they, they, they tracked what were the most successful by way of what had the most engagement. So here's, here's the thing here. Out of 100 million headlines, um, <coughs> the three, three word phrases that got the most engagement. And, and the top three, well, the first one was, we'll make you. The second, were, the second one was, this is why. And the third one was, can we guess? But here's the thing. Check Look at number one. It, it, it was by far the, the best, the best winner. It was two times double, two hundred percent more engagement than the second best. Um, and that th that headline was "Will make you." So it's a, this is a good uh, checkpoint or data point when you're crafting headlines. Uh, refer to this and just sense check um, if you're lost for what words to use. Um, potentially, what could get you some traction. So this is specifically in the headline. Something will make you something. That's right. So in the Facebook ad, um, on, 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 the, on the top of the top of the image um, or even below the image, wherever there's a major headline, um, yeah. if you, it's worth going to this and just referring to this and saying, okay, well, are you using those words? Does it make sense to use it? If it does, then potentially pick the one there that's going to give you the best chance of success. That's really useful. Super. Wow. That's very useful. Uh, next up, let's take a look at emotional headlines. So yeah, just following up from headlines, I think this is very appropriate for Facebook. It's a social platform, so the message needs to be fitting to that um, versus, let's say, uh, LinkedIn, which is more of a business B2B platform. Um, uh -huh. but again, another great checkpoint, you know, keep, keep this, keep reference to this slide next time you're crafting up a headline. Um, it, it doesn't match any, uh, does, it, does it match this framework here as well? So make it emotional. And effectively, it's just making it more personal, right? When you're on Facebook, it's, it's a social platform, so make the message social. Um, and here's some ideas on how to do that. Love it. And then, of course, uh, talk us through the worst performing stuff. Yeah, again, so this is worth having handy um, what not to do. So when you're crafting a headline and you want to want to check that you're within in you're heading down the right direction, just refer to this, have a look at it, and make sure you're um, not using any one of these as a rule of thumb. Love it. Can take control of. That's interesting. I know uh, that's something that a lot of people use. So yeah. We're going to get rid of that one from. Uh... Cool. Uh, engaging numbers. Talk us through that. So the, um, talk. We're we talking about KPIs here now. Daily management KPIs. No, power or... of list posts. The number ten in headlines. So list posts are really useful, are they? Um, so I'm just lost track of what, what slide you're on. On the screen, you've got worst performing phases. Yes. And then next to it, the power of list posts and the number 10 in headlines. So it says many of the most engaging phrases contain numbers and many use the list post format. Yes. Okay. Sorry. My screen size isn't um, expanded. So, um, okay. yeah. So, so I mean, the, 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 I, I think for me, the, the, the main message here is, um, well, the previous slide spoke to being social when you're on Facebook. You can yep. see that most of these probably aren't social um, and, and probably, not to say that not appropriate, but they're not appropriate for Facebook um, is, is a message here. So they, could, they still work. It just depends on where you, where you use these headlines. Got it. Love it. 
Um, oh, it, it might work on LinkedIn, but not necessarily Facebook is, is what I'm trying to say. Yep. And really simple three steps to, to sort of uh, work this into would be, you know, number one, go through the slides, get the list of uh, headlines from the previous slides. Definitely go out there and check what your competitors are doing. See what's already out there. Copy, kind of copy stuff that, that seems to be getting engagement. I know, for example, uh, there's a spaceship, the recent super sort of advertising. They had some really interesting message in there. And then obviously check BuzzSumo, which then sounds like it's a, a major tool of yours to, you know, that you use a lot. I love using that. Um, a lot of uh, industry experts use it as well. It's an awesome data point. Um, you know, it, it effectively could, um, sometimes it could mean the difference between a, a successful campaign and not to some degree. Um, so whatever you're thinking about, whether it's a headline, whether it's the topic or theme of what you want your campaign to be centered around, go to BuzzSumo, type it in, and it shows you where that topic or theme or headline, anything relates to that content related um, uh, shares online, I, how many shares that it get on Facebook, on LinkedIn or Twitter. If it's got a shite load of shares, that's telling you something. Um, yes. And so if you click on that, it actually tells you who shared it as well. So there's, there's, it's, it's an awesome data point um, and, 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 and it can really guide you in the course, correct you in, in the right direction in terms of, you know, what to base your campaign around or what headlines to use, etc. Absolutely. Talk us through, uh, we may have touched on it, but I mean, to make it really, really clear, because I know it's something that Michael's interested in, Mark and Greg, I know you're, a, you're very much a stats-driven uh, kind of thinker, so KPIs for this stuff. Yeah, okay, so this is what we touched on before. Let's say you've um, gone live with your ad. Uh, when you do, um, obviously you're looking for click-throughs or click rates. Um, and as I said, some people come to us and just say they've gone live with the ad, but it's not working and they've only done it for 24 hours. So just make sure it's gone for anywhere between two to seven days. Um, mm -hmm. Try to stick for a longer period because you get you just give it a better chance of um, uh, being, being out in the market and you get more and more data through it as well. If it has been run for two to seven days um, and it's still not getting the right click rate uh, or a high enough click rate, and as a rule of thumb, you know anything above one, anywhere between one to five or six percent is, is is very good. Um, if 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 you're not reaching that, then test more images, uh, try new images, because obviously, as we mentioned before, eighty percent of the success of an ad is based based on an image. So try more images. If you yep. do, and you're still getting low click through rates, test more angles, um, as in the copy of what you're writing, the headline. Um, and, and what, what the angle is in terms of um, what you're proposing uh, or what the topic or theme is. Um, and the angles could be there's a big promise to what you're proposing um, or yeah. there's a big promise to a specific claim or a first-person story of transformation um, or pain-driven uh, and you're removing that pain, i.e. you're paying too much tax or whatever, whatever the theme might be. Uh, or use client testimonials. So there's a whole different ways, number of different ways to cut it. Yeah, perfect. Love it. Okay, so that's... Um that's kind of an overview of the advert. And if you've nailed this and you've sort of played with it and massaged it, what you will be able to achieve is you'll be getting people clicking through to your thing. Now, uh, the general school of thought is if you want, if you're going to click through to your website, the problem is they're going to get a bunch of noise. So your points, you know, if someone's clicking to your website, they're getting your whole offer when in actual fact, all they're interested in so far is your very specific thing. They're interested in your problem for helping them solve housing affordability or you know, the script you're going to give them that they can read to their bank manager, which means they get an instant discount on their loan. Or, you know, the three-step uh, success rate for saving 20% more of your income or um, whatever it is. So it's the, the benefit here is just being really, really clear and having a page which is specifically dedicated to exploring the, the, the problem that you've just spoken about. You know, it's like you don't want to have the airplane coming in and for it to land everywhere it wants on every single, you want to be very specific. I'm, we're going to get you from the end of the runway, landing, we're going to get you to the airport uh, and really give you the information you need. Do you want to add anything to this about how we should think about landing pages, Tina? Yeah, bottom line is let's just give them what they're looking for. Give them the information yes. they're looking for. Anything else is just a distraction. That's the purpose of a landing page. Yeah, don't try and educate them at this point. Just connect with the want, connect with the, what they're looking for and you earn the right to expand the conversation later on. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the outcome you want from a landing page is it's a micro commitment, i.e. I'm gonna give you some information in exchange for your email address. Uh, and again, in it, that in itself is a qualification or vetting process to allow you to sift out the tie kickers to the ones that are genuinely interested. So that, that's the outcome that you want.
Love that. A mi- I love that micro commitment. That's all we want. A micro commitment. Sounds like uh, my twenties. Okay, let's move on. Uh, yeah, URLs. Let's talk a bit about this. Um, so this is just a very quick one. Best practice from an SEO perspective: when you create a landing page, just make it an extension of your domain URL. Um, that's that's effectively um, good practice in terms of helping your SEO presence over the long term. Um, it's not going to it's not going to you know have a, an immediate impact straight away, but over the long term, as you build your digital presence, that's going to help um, support SEO. So I guess um, when a lot of people start off, they use things like click funnels and lead pages and external things. But I'm guessing, so, you know, long term, you really want to be building your own landing pages as part of your your you know, your website infrastructure, right? Ideally, yeah. Over the long term, that's that's the best way to do it um, because you start to build out the foundations of being um, or building an online digital presence. And the way to do that is, you know, build out um, sub pages on your uh, across your main domain. Otherwise, instead of fueling your search ranking in Google, you're fueling lead pages or click funnels or someone else's. So. It's a great, if you, if you want starting out with this, those tools are fantastic. They'll get you up and running quickly, but long term, um, my view is get onto WordPress. It's, uh, it's you know, it's, it's the way to go. Okay, talk us through the anatomy of uh, a good landing page, what it is and what it isn't. Yeah, so look, again, the purpose of this is give the customer or the prospect the information they want, nothing else. Make it, make it I, I think less is more. Um, so make sure the headline aligns with the ad they've clicked on. So they've clicked on a Facebook ad, there's an expectation that they are now going to receive some information that relates to what was positioned in that ad. Make sure the headline is related to that. And it pinpoints the pain point. Uh, and that's really important here is make sure you're um, focusing on what that pain point is. So you, we listed a few before on the worksheet, let's say five. Pick the biggest pain point, the one that keeps them up, up at night, uh, and make sure your headline hits, hits them square between the eyes in terms of what that problem is because the more you get that right, the more people will give you their email address because you have something that, they have a, that, you have something that can help them. Um, and then underneath, um, where the, below the image there as well, um, tell them up front um, in dot point form what they're going to get by giving you... Um, uh, but then giving you your email address. So you're asking them for their email address because you've got information they want, but exp- say to them, look, if you give us your email address, this is what you're going to learn. This is the information mm. that we give you. That's going to help solve the problem that you want to solve or the itch that you want to scratch. Um, and, and so make sure you make it really clear around, you know, what's the benefit to them in, in giving up an email address? Because these days it's getting very noisy, very busy, busy. Everyone's asking for an email address and it's getting harder and harder for to convince someone to give an email address because they're probably, the first reaction is, well, they're very skeptical and they're just going to get spammed by email. So um, the way to mitigate or overcome that is make sure you're hitting the pain point, be really clear about what benefit they're going to get out of it and make sure it's a genuine benefit um, in information they're going to get to help them uh, solve that problem. So I guess usually that picture is what we call above the line. Above the line is what instantly you see when you hit uh, a page with your browser and this is for the people who've already kind of made the decision. They're just like, give it to me. Uh, I find that the bottom of the line stuff, which they generally have to scroll down, is for those who are maybe a little bit more measured, they just need a little bit more persuasion and therefore this stuff is really, it's got to be benefit. It's not going to be, it's not features, it's all benefit, 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 right? Totally, yep, absolutely. And then you, you're right about that in, t- in terms of being above the line. You can see their name and email address and get your, get your case study. Um, just have it bang right smack bang in the middle of the screen. If they want the information, make it really easy for them to get it, um, yeah. uh, i.e. above the fold. Don't make them scroll down and, and search for it. Just put it right in front of their eyes so that it's easy for them to do it. And if you're ever testing it and you land on your page, uh, what you're looking for is where do your eyes get drawn to first? And you want to ask, is that the right thing? And then where do they go next? And really, um, I think the first thing they should see is the big promise at, at the top, and the second thing they should see is the put, get get it now by putting in your email. If you can get those two things right, I think generally you've got a high chance of actually getting uh, signups. Yeah. Cool. Uh, golden rule. Worth just restating again, because uh, people yeah. can get lost with stuff. Yeah. So here's, here's a common mistake. You could target the right audience. You could create the right ad, technically beautiful landing page, just the wrong message and the, and, 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 and the wrong focus can make it all fall apart. 
Um, and, and this is what some of our clients have done in previous campaigns before they come and engage us. It's like they've done everything technically correct, everything looks awesome on, on, the, on the surface level, but they're just totally missing the, the pillars of what makes um, you successful online is that are they actually targeting the right customer pain point? Or in, or more, than off, more often than not, uh, you, you, some, a lot of people are they, they concentrating on a topic or a theme that no one cares about. Um, it's yeah. a problem, it's not, it's not a big enough problem that keeps them up at night. Uh, they don't yeah. really care. Uh, it's like if someone calls me and um, you know that they're, uh, they're trying to sell me insurance, or there's an insurance ad, but I've just renewed my insurance. That's not keeping me up at night. I don't really care. Um, so th this is the, the 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 sort of overlooked key fundamental that uh, you know that it's worth kind of highlight really highlighting here because it is critical to success. Yeah. So really, what you're looking for is a thirsty man in a desert. You're going to promise water when they get to your landing page. Just just talk about water. Don't talk about the bottle or any. It's it's literally just giving them what they want, and don't be too uh, don't be too smart about it. Cool. Uh, give us uh, for those who are KPI minded, give us the lowdown on how you manage performance and what you're looking for. Okay, so um, so you've got people that have now at this stage clicked on your ad. Um, they've then come to your landing page. Um, and the question is, are they opting in? Are they giving you their email address? Well, let's check. What, what's, what's, what's the checkpoint here or sense check uh, or KPIs to measure you, yourself against? So if you've got low conversion rates, check that there's been 100 hits to your landing page, yes or no. Um, if yes, um, does the ad match the landing page? Um, again, I mentioned that before. Make sure the information is, is aligned with what the ad says. So if you're talking about water, um, on, on the ad, but then you're talking about cars when you come to the landing page, there's a mismatch there. So make sure that, that it, it's, it's aligned. Um, if all of those are yeses and they're all good, you've got all that right, you need to test more. That's when you then create new landing pages and, and test more landing pages. Love it. Cool. So let's, uh, let's move on to step three in the funnel. So far we've got the Facebook advert, which is generating hits to the landing page. That's basically getting signups now. You start to get people giving you their email address. Step three, talk us through uh, the thoughts behind this one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, at this stage, we're, we're at a good, good, good stage of the pipeline. You've, you've actually collected email addresses, so you're already, you're already building a customer list, and that's an asset in itself which will convert over time. Uh, but wouldn't it be awesome if, um, if you had a – this is a bit like having a sales rep uh, that works for you while you sleep, never goes on leave, never gets sick, Never, never ask for a pay rise. Perfectly executes the pitch every single time, and that's what a video sales letter is. It's effectively um, a, a bit of a let's call it a ten to fifteen minute video that explains um, that provides that information that we're seeking. Um, but you, you're doing it in, in the form of what I call a video sales letter or value value video, um, and this in itself helps pre-qualify. The, the lead and, and it's a vetting process in itself before yep. you start to want to spend some time and, and talk to them. And you're also educating them and strengthening your domain expertise. And it's a bit like, you probably notice, have you ever, um, I suppose, seen so much of someone online and you feel like you know them but you've never met them? Um, and, and, and one of the reasons for that is they have great um, digital video presence as well. Um, and this is one of the ways to accomplish that for you as well. As well. So by the time that you talk to them on the phone or you meet them face to face, there's already some level of rapport there because they've seen your video, they've seen your face, they've heard your voice, they've bought into your concepts, they know that you know what you're talking about yep. because you've explained them in the video. So a lot of people when they say video, they go, oh God, I don't want to do that, I don't know where to start. Why video, do you know? Um, look, there is so much content on the, on the internet and um, people, uh, I mean, everyone, you could, I personally relate to this as well. Like when, when I want to, sometimes I get tired of reading too much on the internet because uh, I've just looked at the screen the whole day and uh, worked in the office. Um, and video is a great way to easily consume content with minimal effort. You can just sit back and, and press play and, and, and watch it. Um, and for that reason, video now is going to be... Um, blowing up, it's going to be huge in terms of content driven marketing. It's all going to be about video. But interestingly, as you can see, um, there is, is a lot of it's going to come from mobile. Um, yeah. and, the, and the second takeaway point is that make sure all of your digital presence is mobile optimized. And everyone's talking about it, but and this is just the highlights the importance of that as well. Can I just add in, if you're going to do video, I think uh, subtitling is increasingly becoming something that everyone should look at. 
because uh, often when people are watching the video, they're in a place, but they don't necessarily have headphones. But if you've got subtitling on the bottom there, you're, you're hitting both, um, both pieces of the puzzle. And I think YouTube has an automatic subtitling piece. You can do rev.com. Uh, just watch out. I actually did a subtitling video, auto subtitled, and halfway through, I dropped the F-bomb, apparently. Uh, thankfully, someone let me know. So, yeah, just watch out for that one. So let's talk about what's the golden rule of uh, just to sort of wear a time. I, I do want to respect everybody's time here. Golden rule of video when you're doing this stuff. Um, so I think that there's a couple of components to it. Um, is is making sure that it's got um, you, you need you need to have the script position right um, and the formula here. Let's let's make sure I'm on the right slide. So the formula here is um, making sure that you pinpoint um, a major frustration or pain point. So you know they're not going to watch something if they don't care about it or it's not yeah. taking them up. So make sure it's doing exactly that. Um, and the second point is um, make sure that the information is valuable up front. Give them what they're looking for. Um, mm. And and so um, give enough so that it solves some of the problem for them, um, but so that it also gives them a reason to reach out to you to want to know more. Um, mm. So you know, hitting a big pain point, that's great. You're then giving them some information to solve that, but then you know, there's a reason for them to reach out to you and take the next step. For those of you on the program, you'll know that if uh, we do a lot of work on uh, sort of video blog flash planners and the structure we use is six steps. The first one is, you know, introduce yourself. Hey, it's Stuart Bell here from Adara, or Tino from Binary. Uh, then make the promise. Uh, today I'm gonna show you how to achieve this outcome and get, a, get rid of this problem in the next week. You seed, you talk a bit about what you do, how you work, and then you teach. And this is really important. Uh, teaching, is a really, and particularly if you combine teaching with selling, you know, you can add, is much more amenable. It gets through people's filters and allows you to add value, which is the most important thing, rather than just going in there with sales videos. We know when somebody's selling. And I think everybody knows when they've seen people out there who are on social media where, you know, every friggin' post, every video is a sales pitch at the end of it. I personally think the ratio should be at least for every four pieces of content you put out, only one of them is a, is a, is a sell. And just aim to add value. Um, so yeah, if you're in this space and you're looking for, you know, further formidable on that, the, the video blog flash panel we've got on the uh, member site is probably a good thing to check out. Um, let's talk to how to. Sure. So um, here are the key elements to building a, a really good video sales letter. Um, the, the first is the script, and that's that's the real key piece to it. It's worth investing the time to get this right. You need to spend, as a guide, between five to, I would say, between five to ten to fifteen hours to produce the script um, and and get that right. Because again, if you don't get that right, you do everything else, then it's not really delivering the message in the right way. Um, mm -hmm. The second thing is um, use uh, relevant. Um, images on the, on the well, it is actually the slide deck so you need to once you've got the script right you then everything else comes pretty easy and you've got the message right produce a slide deck um and um that complements um and articulates the, the key messages in the script that you've got um and then we um then press record and we use uh, we recommend using um a software program called screenflow by telescreen that's yeah. for mac um, and then you can get video edited. So effectively, well, to wrap all of that up, basically what it is, you've got a script um, and, and you build a slide deck. Um, and I think the next slide is we, we talk about how, how you actually implement it. But, but you, you read it, you read the script out. Um, as you're reading the script out, you're advancing through the slide deck and it's recording. So it's a bit like an online presentation. So it's not a video of your face per se. Uh, it's yeah. a video sales letter, which... Uh, delivers the information that you promised them from the Facebook ad, from them opting in, um, and the problem that you're pro pro um, saying that you're gonna solve uh, in the form of what we call a video sales letter. So it's really good because you can really articulate your point clearly by use of um, really good images and a slide deck. It's information packed as well. Um, and, and it should go for anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. A lot of people say to us, oh, that's really long, but you, you kind of need to keep it that long to cover all bases um, and to demonstrate expertise. If it's too short, you, you just can't cover enough ground. But just to be clear, this is something that someone will watch after they've already made a commitment to download your thing, 
They already won't know what you're all about. So the, I mean, I'm assuming that the commitment of time to, to consume your content is directly proportional to the level of engagement up to this point. If you put a sales letter on Facebook, people don't know who you are. They don't know what you're all about. They don't know what the benefit for you. They're very unlikely to watch 15 minutes. Later on, very different kettle of fish, right? Yeah, and it's again, small bite-sized chunks have clicked on your ad, that's one level of commitment too. They're then providing you an email address, that's a second level of commitment. And then yep. now they're coming to the video again, and not everyone will watch it, and that's totally fine. Uh, but that's mm -hmm. also gone away because you're weeding out, again, the people that are not genuinely interested as well. Yeah, and KPIs? Um, so at this, at this point, um, you need to check, are people watching your video? Um, yeah. have they uh, and are they or are they not? Um, the first thing to check is you've got 100 opt-ins. Have they got 100 opt-ins? If yes, then check the video matches the ad. Again, um, is the video content aligned with what you say in the landing page? So if the landing page says, I'm gonna talk about these top three, top four, five strategies around helping you invest in property, make sure that the content in the video gives them that. If it's something else, then there's a mismatch. So just check that. If that is all good and that does match, then check the technology as in does the video actually work like go through it as if you were the customer and make sure it does play and there's no technology problems there as well if that all works uh, and in most cases um, it's usually one of those top three reasons um, then if that doesn't work you then need to craft up a new a new video sales order but we really if you get all of the basics right you, that really needs to happen cool what we might do if in the uh, follow-up email we send out it might give a bit of information if you like to know about you know how to what the best case scenario is if you're going to film videos, you know, potentially how much you should spend for someone to film them and potentially how you could do it if you want to do it a little bit, uh, a little bit less expensively. Is that cool? Yeah, totally right. You can do that. Um, so let's just quickly sort of bring it home if that's cool. Um, so far you've got someone to click on your link. They've come to your landing page. They've downloaded your thing. They've watched your video. Ultimately the next step is for them to, you move from sort of pure marketing, and now they're in your sales funnel. They've gone from being someone who was a suspect to a prospect to a lead to someone who actually wants to engage with you. Now, uh, in our world, this would then book into a pre-vet call, which is a 15 minute uh, sort of chat, where as a, an advisor, you're aiming to go you know, really deep, really quickly, identify a real world problem that you can help, and then either make a decision that you want to meet with them, or alternatively, let them know that uh, they're, they're, not the right per, you know, not, they're not the right fit, or, or you can't help them as well as you can. Uh, is that the same for, for, for sort of what you do? I'm pretty sure it is, Tony, you know? Yeah, totally right. We, we, um, so th th there's probably two steps. Is once they've seen the video, they uh, fill out a small um, fact find form, like four or five questions, um, and then they just pick a time to, to, um, in, in the diary that, that, um, that they can book in. Uh, and it's, you know, sort of removes all the friction. Um, it happens quickly. Um, and it's a great customer experience because again, you're just giving them what they want very quickly. And the beauty is that it's all happening on autopilot while you're asleep. Um, there's no friction there, it just happens straight through. And if you've got the right structure to that call, two things happen. You end up talking to, you know, you only end up meeting with people who are motivated, who have problems that you want to work with. And secondly, you actually take the lead from the start because they already know what you're about. You're not having to sell anything. You can actually just go deep into that problem and, and really talk about, you know, you know what I do, you know who I do it for, so why don't we talk about, you know, the problem that you want me to help you solve as opposed to let me give you an overview of Financial Planning 101. Yeah, so at this stage, it's worth noting that these guys, this is, these aren't just any leads, these are inbound, highly qualified, and the reason is, I'll say it again, they've clicked on your ad, qualification mm. point number one, two, they've provided you an email address, qualification number two, they've watched your video, qualification mm. point number three, <clears throat> and then they've actually gone to the trouble of filling out an application form and booking a time with you, qualification point number five. No one's going to want to do all of that if they're not genuinely serious about wanting to talk to you about the services. So, uh, and yes, not everyone will opt in, not everyone will click on your ad, not everyone will get an email address, but that's totally fine. We only want the ones that are genuinely uh, interested. So yeah. the lead out of this process are highly qualified and they're inbound working on autopilot, you turn up to work and you've got meeting books in your meetings booked in your diary and that person feels like they already know you to some degree because they've seen your video right. in 10 minutes. So, so that's, that's, kind of, that's the end game of where, we, where, we, where, we, where you want to take this and some of the outcomes you, we're looking for. Which leads you to a place where now you're ready to sit down with someone who understands what you're all about. You're both clear on the problem you're trying to solve. Uh, you're on parity. 
So you've got, you know, they realize you're an expert and they have come to you. You have permission to sit down and talk to them and you can get into it. Whatever you call your first appointment, your discovery, you know, your, uh, in our world, we've got the nine step strategy session, which is there's a module on the site called the conversion on it, which helps unpack that. But basically this is where you sort of hit a point where most of the time you're going to get 90, 95% conversion rate because all of the hard work in selecting out the people who don't fit has already done, been done for you. And much of it's been automated. Yes, and the, the, the second outcome is you, 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 you've got you're building a customer list. Uh, of, you've got these all these email addresses of people opted in, and there's email automation that are slowly nurturing those, and over time they'll convert as well uh, into into more appointments. Exactly. So that's the five step funnel. By the way, that was, should have been five consultation, not four. Do me a favor. Type in the box. I know. Uh, I hope it's been useful. Do, type in the Q and A box now. What's been the most valuable thing from this that you can take away? Uh, and implement in the next week because this is not a just in case kind of webinar. You're here because this is something you want to get onto now. The best way of doing that is taking action now. So type in the Q&A box. Emma, Glenn, Greg, Mark, would love to hear from you. Michael, Sean, what's something you can do in the next week from that we spoke about, Charles, that you can implement right now? Let me know. What's the number one thing? I'm just going to answer... Uh, Mark, you had a question earlier on about the best days to post while everyone's typing that in. Uh, we just published a blog on our, our, our Dario site called Facebook is not for cast videos. According to the research that we did, uh, posting on Sunday usually gets a lot of reactions, but Friday is better. Impact score of 1.2, whereas Sunday is a 0 0.05. So Friday's your day. Uh, 1, point, 1 to 4 p.m. is the best time for post if you're fishing for likes, but if you want lead conversion, apparently it's 5 to 6 o'clock. Uh, and the best way to get uh, engagement is to ask um, asking questions rather than just uh, sort of um, saying stuff. Posting more, posting five to six times actually decreases the number of clicks. But 73% uh, if you post once or twice a day, apparently. Hopefully that's helpful. Glenn says testing, readjusting, and checking KPIs has been most useful. Emma says landing pages are what has floats as her boat. So that's good to know. Um, dude, this has been really useful. Tell us a bit about sort of what you're working on and if people sort of want to get some help with this, because I know what we've covered, I know we've been going for sort of 90 minutes, but we've just scratched the surface on this stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot to this and, and you know, we, we, we covered as much as uh, that we could. So if, um, for those of you on the webinar today, happy to sort of dive in a bit deeper on any specifics that you might want to know more about and perhaps we didn't get a chance to cover off. Um, I usually need to do sort of 15 minute discovery calls um, but um, for, for non-clients, but I'm happy to um, cover any gaps uh, and dive a bit deeper offline um, if, if you want me to, um, for those of you on today's webinar. So um, in the next 14 days, just send me an email, um, tino at binarymarketing.com.au or just um, go to binarym.com.au, which is um, the, our website, uh, and scroll down to book a 15 minute discovery call, click that in. Um, and happy to extend that as well. It doesn't have to be 15 minutes, but um, yeah, yeah, for those of you interested in today and being more specific around some of the things we covered off um, and want to unpack it a bit more, um, yeah, just go to the website, click on the book of time, or send me an email. Perfect. And Marcus, who unfortunately had to drop off a little bit early, his connection was dying. He said he's really interested in speaking to you early next week to talk about all of the stuff we've spoken about. So Marcus Roberts uh, uh, is someone you need to connect with. I think Mark mentioned he's uh, interested. He's clicked through on the ad. He's watched your live video, he already has his email. So yeah, next step would be to book a meeting. And Greg as well, they've got a tight link between the ad, the message on the landing page, and Greg's got a couple of great sort of online offerings there. So uh, yeah, connect with Tina. I really appreciate you sort of extending that out and, and giving the opportunity to sort of talk about this stuff. Dude, this has been awesome. Uh, love sort of what you shared here today. Are there any final thoughts that you have before we, we call it a wrap? Um, no, well, I think, I think it's, um, you, you, good luck out there. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a jungle out there. So, but yeah, look, if there's any, any way that, um, uh, I can help, let me know, but, um, yeah, just, I think there's a lot of stuff in there that that's really useful. So make sure you, um, if you want to get the most out of it, refer to some of the stuff there or send me a note, but yeah, it's, um, it's, it's an exciting time to be in the digital space. I, I can certainly say that because there's some huge opportunities. If you get it right, you'll be two or three steps ahead of your competitors because there's a lot of advice firms out there that aren't doing a lot of these things that we showed you. Um, yeah. So you know, if you only do half the things that I showed you today, uh, you, yeah. you will be two or three steps ahead because I've seen a lot of advice firms not even 
not even doing even a fraction of it. It's so true. We are, this, this is the frontier. This is like the West of America during the cowboy days. And uh, if, even if you're doing a little bit of this, uh, you're going to get further ahead by those businesses who, who aren't. So um, yeah, this is very much one thing that um, we've been investing in quite heavily in the last two years. And we've really started to see it just grow and grow and grow. So, um, dude, thank you so much for sharing this with us. I've learned heaps. Uh, I know that everybody, you know, we've still got most people on the uh, agenda, uh, on the webinar, so that kind of speaks for itself. So, uh, dude, thank you so much. I will chat to you a bit later. Everybody else, unless you've got anything else, this webinar kind of feels like it's done. Have a wonderful weekend. And uh, do me a favor, drop myself or Tina an email and just let us know how you're getting on with Facebook. We'd love for you to share either on maybe Facebook itself, um, a little bit of any success you have. And of course, if you've got any questions, feel free to, to, to book a session with Tino. And if you're on the program uh, and you want some support for any of the video stuff, uh, feel free to um, you know, let me know and we'll, we'll hook you up with the right module. Other than that, Tino, much on for the weekend? Um, as little as possible, but I don't think that's going to happen um, with, with a little two-year-old. But uh, look, Stu, thanks for having me on um, and, and getting me back. Um, look forward to the, the, other, the next ones. But yeah, thanks again, mate. All right, fella. I'm, I'm, I've got the little guy this weekend. Rachel's off to New Zealand for uh, 40th. So uh, feel your pain, man. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, I'll speak to you soon. See ya.